everybody. Welcome to the Bow Fishing Buzz presented by AMS Bow Fishing. Season 1, Episode 6. My goodness, time flies. My name is Matthew. I'm here with my good buddy D. Schmitty. How's it going, Schmitty? Going good. Excited to film Episode 6. I think this is going to be a good one. Yes. The weather has changed. Mm-hmm. Fish are getting shot. Fish are getting shot. And I think there's going to be a lot of fish shot... Uh, this coming weekend. Yes, I think so. Big tournament. Big tournament Big down in the Texas, Louisiana area. Mm-hmm. The old Bass Pro U.S. Open Bowfishing Tournament. Yep, yep. And um, our plans got a, got a little changed here. We were going to be coming down a week early to do some shooting and filming yep. ahead of time. Yep. It was going to be like a 10-day deal. We were yeah. going to go down there and shoot all yep. kinds of species and film it all. And That's right. But... Um, Plans changed. My daughter had her final basketball banquet of her high school career, so mm-hmm. I didn't want to miss that. No, so. can't miss that. Made the right call. Yeah, so I'll be flying out tomorrow morning. Be heading down to flying into Shreveport, Louisiana there, and staying there by the Bass Pro Shops in Boise City. So when you're down there and you're getting all ready to go and start sticking them fishing tournament, make sure to stop by in the Bass Pro store there. And say hi and get some AMS gear and tuck a little bow fishing. Mm-hmm. Matt will be down. You'll be down there having a booth set up. Yep, I'll be down there with uh, Josh Bird, uh, one of our reps that's flying in also. So he'll be down there with me. And uh, yeah, make sure to stop by, say hello, get some gear, tell me what you're seeing for scouting wise and how things are going for you. Absolutely. And um, stop by for sure because it's always a huge tournament. I'm sure there's going to be a you know four or five hundred people mm-hmm. shooting in the tournament again. Yep. Yep. So, just from my past experiences, I've gone down there a couple of years now working mm-hmm, a booth. Mm-hmm. Every tournament kind of has that, you know, it's got a little different atmosphere to it. Just, sure. You know, it's really cool to be down there. For this one, it's a whole new ball game. That's right. It kind of feels a little bit like the Super Bowl. It does. You know, they have it in a big fancy Bass Pro shops. Mm-hmm. There's tons of people there. Correct me if I'm wrong, but is first place like twenty grand? Twenty five. Twenty five grand, and yeah. then Big Fish is an extra ten. Five, I don't five know or ten? Exactly, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So there's a lot of money it's, that's going to get handed time. out as well. It's big time. Plus, it's kind of like kicking off the bow fishing season, really. Yep. You know. Yep. Um, early, earlier than the past tournaments that they've held mm-hmm. and put on. So mm-hmm. it's going to be a good one. So make sure to stop by and say hello. I'm um, looking forward to chatting with some people and seeing some friends I haven't seen in the in the past couple of years. So For sure. Make sure to stop by. It's always cool to hear what. Uh, what people are seeing and if what they're telling you they're seeing holds true the day of weigh-ins you know they say they're on fish and then they end yeah, up not yeah. showing up to weigh-ins you know that they uh didn't have a lot of success out on the water it's gonna be very odd not having the boat down there sure yeah you're gonna <laughs> be like you're to just fly. gonna be sitting in that booth just oh, oh i know oh, i'm I so jealous I don't, I don't like to fly i like to have the boat behind me so yeah. i can go go out at nighttime and stick some fish in different waters that we've never shot before but. i'd rather take the Ooh, 20 hour drive down there in a heartbeat with the boat than the four or five hours it'll take to fly down there guaranteed if it means we can shoot some fish guaranteed so yeah so looking forward to it um not looking forward about getting up tomorrow morning and getting on three different flights to get down there but oh three flights yeah wow. oh. Mosinee to minneapolis minneapolis to atlanta atlanta to shreveport okay wow yeah so so i'll be getting up early and heading down that way so everyone that's shooting in it you know be safe scouting um be safe the night of the tournament um if there's weather rolling in or, or whatever make sure you're always checking your radar and stuff like that but just be safe and and have a good time and uh shoot lots of fish and the main thing is have a good time absolutely enjoy the tournament enjoy the atmosphere mm, well like i said the atmosphere is it's different that's down right there. that's right it's very cool mm-hmm. cool to be a part of too right right so, we had somebody on our YouTube channel, on our podcast, there asked a question: mm-hmm. if we could have video playing over top of our podcast. That's a very good question. Good it suggestion. Is. So, what we did last Thursday is, or two Thursdays ago, I believe. Was that was. two weeks already? Yes, it was two weeks. Ago. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. wow. Well, it was the kickoff of March Madness. Yeah. It was a kickoff of the college basketball, and we had our own kickoff. The yep, March that's right. We went out shooting fish. Yep, yep. So, yeah, two weeks ago, um, Thursday, we went out and 
did some filming, shot some fish, and we were filming the whole thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to play that video over top of this on our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So everybody else can go out and check that out and watch that. A little bit of entertainment instead of just listening to some audio. Yeah. And get to see that. And you'll be able to see how we actually do it filming-wise because we're not in no big hurry. We're taking our time. We shoot a fish. We shut the fan off. Mm -hmm. We hold the fish up to the camera and do some talking. And after that, we take some pictures, and and then we get rolling again. So it's not really super fast-paced when we're filming. Right. But but it'll be kind of cool for people to see how we actually do it. You know, we're not out just... Trying to get every single Whacking fish and we stacking. see. Whacking and stacking, right. Um, right. Although when I see a fish, I want to shoot them. Yep. And I know I was a little rusty. I missed, I think, my first three shots. That's right. You just got to get, get into the swing of things a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yep. So, but it'll be cool for you guys to see how we actually, you know, get there and do the filming stuff and do the filming aspects of it. And I think that they're really going to enjoy the fusion footage. Yeah, the fusion that they're gonna cool. have. Yeah, 360 footage. And nope, be able... nope, I'm not having it on 360. Oh, footage. okay, gotcha. I'm gonna do it in a different format this okay. time and check it out because the 360, we had the filming platform in the boat, so the fusion was closer to the deck than what I like to have it. Sure. Um, if the filming platform was not there, I like to have it sticking on the the globe of the sh- fan. Mm-hmm. So it gives you a really wide perspective. When we go out and, and do some shooting with it that way, we'll put that in 360 mode for the fans sure. to, so they can just swipe around with their mouse and they can look wherever they want. They can right. look in the front of the boat, in the back of the boat, in the sides and whatever. It's mm-hmm. pretty cool. It's wherever really they want to look and check out. Yeah. Right. But this angle here was just too close. Um, some of the, some of the um, tools that we were needed to make it look nice didn't look very nice in there so we're just gonna go with the other way it looks really awesome though so that's a uh, the way you're editing it that is gonna be it's gonna follow the front of the boat correct yeah i'm gonna kind of, kind of follow the front of the boat sure. a little bit and if sure. there's a fish on the side it, it kind of swings to the side a little bit mm-hmm. um, the fusion is really cool I yeah mean, for filming this stuff i mean you can do tons of some awesome stuff you know tiny planets and 360 mm-hmm. and just just some really neat stuff and i'm Really surprised at the audio that that thing. The audio up. we had the generators running. The fan was off, but the generators are running. And honestly, I feel like the fusion audio is almost better than our normal Canon or Handycam audio. Yeah, it was, it was that I'm pointed crazy. right at you in front of you, and right. the fusion is mounted, you know, back further. Yeah, yeah, it sounded really good. It was really cool. Well, let's talk a little about that night. You Absolutely, know? Um, it was a fun night. I had a buddy of mine, I was sitting here working out in the shop, and I had a buddy text me and said that, hey, he says, I found a spot where there's some open water, and he says, I think we can get the boat in there. Mm-hmm. Um, not sure, but I think we can get it in there. So we said, all right, tomorrow night's the night. Let's go do it. So yep. you were running the cameras that yep. night. Yep, yep. And uh, we met Caleb in Pittsville at the gas station. Yep. And drove down to uh, central Wisconsin, and we got there, and... <laughs> He was back in the boat, and and this time of year in Wisconsin, uh, they really drain the flowages mm-hmm. down big time uh, because they're expecting all this winter runoff and all this new water coming, and so they're they're drained down to you know ten, twelve feet below yep. summer. A lot know, of times you'll, in like those back cuts and bays, you'll just have ice laying on sand. Right, there won't even be water. There won't underneath. even be water in there. No. Yeah. And there's stumps everywhere. And yep. So as Caleb is back in me in the water, it went down right away from where people load their boats yep. and power power drive, power, yep, power, power, power load and whatever. Yep. And but then once it got past that, it kind of, the trailer started coming back out of the water. That's not good. <laughs> so I was like, whoa, whoa, stop! Uh, we might have to do a little push in here yep. to get the boat in the water. So yep. yeah, we actually had to start out by the night by pushing the boat in the water mm-hmm. and getting it unloaded that way. Um, but man, what a beautiful night! It was just the wind died down. It was a beautiful sunset. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't a, a tremendously large area to shoot because of the water so low and ice preventing us from getting further out. Right. Uh, but man, what a what a just an awesome setting, and I'm sure you'll be able to see it in, yes. the, in, the, in see, the footage. How cool that looked. That's what I like about how we're gonna we're gonna be talking about a night that everyone listening, you guys are gonna get to see exactly what we're talking right. about. Right. Right. That's pretty you cool. Know? Yeah. Yeah. And just a side note with. Uh, when we picked up Caleb, we were supposed to meet him in Babcock. Yeah, which was another 20 miles from where we picked him up. At. Yeah, and and I was <laughs> snapping him the whole way down. I said, oh, we're going to stop in Pittsville and get gas. Oh, okay, okay, meet you in Babcock. Sounds good. So we're filling up with gas. All of a sudden, here pulls in his truck. Hey, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here. I'm ready. We're like, what? We're, we're not supposed to pick up. He was so excited to go. He yeah. just had to meet us. He just couldn't take it anymore. Yeah, it was funny because we were just getting ready to leave. Yep. And all of a sudden, I see a truck pulling in, and all of a sudden, it was him. I'm like, oh. 
Good thing we didn't pull out oh, right. a couple minutes sooner. We might have Somebody's them. excited to go shoot some yes. fish. Yes, <laughs> which I was too, so that yeah. was, that was yeah. a good time. But, yeah, back to But, you know, it was, it was a beautiful night. Um, we were just kind of easing our way from the boat landing area there, and, and Caleb's kind of telling me where they were shooting fish the night before and pointing out areas and stuff like that. And we didn't go very far for our... We saw our first couple of fish, mm-hmm. and like I said, I was a little rusty. <laughs> uh, I shot and missed, and we missed a couple of first fish. But then um, once we got going, we started sticking some more fish. But yeah, we were shooting the new hooligans oh. um, that night, and I had mine set at 40 pounds on the wrap cam, and Caleb had his set at 50 pounds. And uh, I was really liking the 40-pound draw weight mm-hmm. on that. It was very smooth. Mm-hmm. felt like I had a lot of nice power behind yep. that also. Yep. Um, so I was really happy to get out and start shooting a hooligan. Um and and we saw some some good fish in there. We we had some good times. It was we shot some good size commons. Uh, we shot some standard size commons. You know, mm-hmm. those 15, 12 pounders in there. And it was just really cool because you can kind of see the houses on the bank. You can see the water, mm-hmm. and then you can see exactly what we're talking about. By it, there's actually ice, but there's no water underneath right. it in that one spot. Right, it's just land. Yep. And that's why the ice is just sitting there. There were times actually, and the, the when we got back in there, the water was nice and clear. Yeah, it was shallow. It was beautiful for filming. Yep. the fish were kind of slow. You know, yep. they kind of let us get right up on there. And there would be times that we would push fish out from the deeper trough that we were in, mm-hmm. and they would go swim up against that ice, and they would like come out of the water trying yeah. to get over or underneath that ice. They didn't know what was going it was on. A barrier, and it was it went from sand bottom to ice yeah it was like a wall yeah it was a wall they couldn't get up over that and sometimes they were going crazy right on maybe donald trump was trying to get some yep. maybe he was building an yep. ice wall or we're something trying to <laughs> contain the carp contain the carp yep yep <laughs> yep <laughs> yeah that was that was i've never seen something like that they no. were like losing their mind and then we could there was one spot where there was water under the ice yeah and i remember we're sitting there waiting for a fish to come out we could hear the fish Hitting the, hitting ice, the ice underneath. Right. Mm-hmm. That was crazy. Mm-hmm. I'd never, I'd never experienced something like that yeah. before. And it's cool. And so we're, we're, Caleb is saying, yeah, I've never seen anybody in a spot. You know, it's a really cool spot. It's kind of hidden and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. You know, mm-hmm. we're just sitting there talking. We're shooting fish and we're filming and taking pictures and holding fish up and. And uh, we made the one strip all the way down the open water, and we turned around and came back, and I looked, and I could see kind of that glow yep. from another boat. Yep. And uh, I said, Caleb, I, said, I thought you said this was a secret spot. <laughs> mm-hmm. yep. He told one too many buddies about it that yep, night. Yep, because there was another boat that came in there, and, and uh, they were enjoying a, a beautiful night of yes. early season bow fishing as well. But we had a really cool night. Um, Caleb ended up shooting a... A pineapple buff. Oh, yeah, a pineapple buff. That's, That's what we call them here. Um, it's something that we see quite often this time of year in early season. Is the I, I've seen it on carp a lot. Mm-hmm. This is the first time I've seen it on a, on a buffalo carp. Sure. Um, but it was really cool because their scales are almost like popping off their skin. Yeah, you know. Yep. Um, like if you would if you would take your hand and go against the grain. Yeah. Your hand would get stopped. These scales are like. They're almost like sticking straight. All right. of the, it's hard to explain. Right. But yeah, it is very strange looking. Yep. It's like their body is super tight. Yes. And they almost have like a purplish color to them also. Yep. But yeah, their scales like popping off of them. Mm-hmm. And I think it has something to do with the the fish being under that cold water for mm-hmm. you know four four months out of the year. Yeah. Um, that super cold water, and I'm sure they're getting low on oxygen as well in there because. Um, I know here on some of the local floaters, they actually run aerators yep. for the for the game fish, the walleyes and the crappies and the perch and the muskies and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, um, so stuff is starting to opening up, and that's really good for the fish. That's a great spot to go um, if you live in a region where there's a lot of snow and ice. Right. Those early spots that start to open up, those fish love to come there, especially if you have some type of water running into yes. there. Yep. Um, that's dumping in a lot of fresh oxygen for yep. those for those rough fish also. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and then later on, I think Caleb shot a 35 or 31 pound buff. 30, um, yeah, 34? I think it was something like Some, that. Yeah, yeah yep. 30 to 35. And that yep. was kind of a goofy looking fish too. It kind of yeah. had a little bit of a hump back and its, yeah. its mouth, lips were all kind of weird, but yeah. solid yeah. fish. Solid fish, yeah. yeah. And that was, you know, and we had gone past that spot probably four times yeah. already. We you just know? kept making, going back and forth, right. shooting new batches of fish, yep. it seemed like. Yep. And that was right up on the 
shore, right up on the sand yeah. bank, basically. Yeah. And it was yeah. just sitting there. And like I said, we've gone by there four times, and all of a sudden that one, in one of our paths we were going down further, just ended up to slide up into there. And, yep. And so... And when we're filming, we're taking our time. We're not running really fast either. We're going really slow and mm-hmm. stuff like that when we're filming. Um, but did you, by chance, see the common carp that Adam Tobiak shot? Yes, I did. Wow. Wow. 45 pounds. That's, that's huge. Did you see the, the stomach on that fish was incredible? Yes. I have him on Snapchat, and he put a video of it, and he the, the barrel moved. Or something. He, yeah. The fish was in the barrel. Yeah. Took up almost the entire barrel. And he, he either bumped it or kicked it, and it caused the barrel to move. And that fish, it caused that fish's belly to move. <laughs> the barrel got bumped, stopped moving. And I'm sitting there watching, and that, that fish's belly just kept... Whoosh, whoosh, wow. Like it was like full of jello almost or yeah. something. It just kept like rippling back and forth. It was just... This is a crazy, crazy looking cart. Oh, just Gosh. wild. It... It's not your normal thirty, no, five pound common carp, right? Because this thing had like a, like a basketball in yes. its belly. Its its scales were like not proportionate to the amount no. of weight it was holding. Right. It looked like it was like struggling to maintain the weight that right. it had. It was crazy, and that reminds me because Caleb shot a common that night, and as we were holding it, talking to the camera, so yeah. he shot it through the stomach area. The arrow came out. Yep, and the whole time. When he was taking it off his arrow, water just poured out of his stomach. Mm-hmm. It didn't smell bad or nothing, no, and it was clear it was like just, it was just water. Water. Yeah. And he actually left the mark on the deck, you know, on some of the blood that was on the deck. He left the trail as he carried oh. the fish to the back and put it in the tub sure. in the back. Yep. You can see a little little trail that that thing left. So, mm-hmm. And one of my buddies also shot a common... Uh, the weekend after Adam shot his, and that was a 38 pound, or oh no, my. not 38, um, I think it was 32 pound. 32. Or no, I'm sorry, 28 pound common. Okay. 28 pound common. But that thing too had a really funny looking belly on it, and it was all full of water. Wow. I wonder if they absorbed that with the crazy winter we had with I the ice no and idea. snow, if the pressure has something. I don't know. I have Just no idea. I've, I've seen those fish come in for the big 20 in June. Yeah. Oh, I remember. I have a picture in my head of a, a gentleman holding one up, and it was like that. Yeah. I remember uh, Jeb Verland shot one in our tournament had a huge stomach on it yep. like that. Yep. So, yeah, really strange. So you see some pretty – and we were always seeing carp with one eye and stuff like oh, that. Oh, yeah. You know, that's really common. We here. shot one that had um, – it's, it's like one of its fins was just like a little – Two of them like that. T-Rex arm. Yeah, two of them. Really? Okay, we shot sure. two of them that night where yeah. the fins are almost like gone. It's mm-hmm. like they get trapped, and they, they're always rubbing the bottom of the – Right. Of the – bottom i guess yeah yeah <laughs> the bottom of the bottom rocks or they're <laughs> skimming themselves on something yeah mm-hmm. yeah well you keep talking because i'm gonna have a tasty drink of my I got, i'm a little parched oh, i'm a little parched i'm gonna have okay. a little taste of my great tasty power right sure, here sure well uh well matt's enjoying his beverage i'm just gonna touch on like the filming aspect of things honestly as fun as shooting fish is i love being behind the camera and capturing that to have that for whatever we want to use yeah. here at AMS. And honestly, sometimes I get more of a kick out of getting the perfect shot mm-hmm. than I do being it down on the deck actually shooting fish. It's adrenaline rush. It absolutely is. And sometimes I'm sitting up there, and there's a couple times that night <laughs> we're filming something, and Matt and Caleb doubled up, and it was just a beautiful shot. The fish came in, and I went from Matt to Caleb, got both the shots. The bowl was in frame. Everything was good. And it's like I have to, like, hold in my – I'm sitting up there just like – I just got to hold it in because, oh, that was just such a good shot, yeah, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, it's just a little side note. I love I love filming and doing stuff like that. And that big buff that Caleb shot. Yeah, yeah. It was funny because you mentioned something. We were making a pass through, and you said, oh, look at the moon. Yeah. Get a shot of the moon or something. So I was – I focused in on the moon, and I was panning from the moon down to the trees, you know, and the lights on the boat give everything just kind of that eerie, cool – look to mm-hmm. it you know mm-hmm. and i'm coming down and I, I watched it back when we got back i'm panning down and all of a sudden on the bottom of the screen screen you can see a fish swimming yeah and i keep panning yep. down panning down and also you guys are like oh there's a buff right there and it just it works so perfect i went from panning up came down and it's i didn't even have to move and boom right, right. there was the right. shot that you was, were so you were actually recording the moon and just getting a little bit of b-roll on the moon yep 
and I'm it, just having to pan down to the shooters on the deck. And I even panned down in time to right as soon as you guys saw it, I was right, right on the fish. I mean, it, that doesn't cool. happen very often, but yeah. it, it was pretty that's neat cool. that night. Yeah. And that's one thing about filming from a platform, a raised platform yes. that's even higher, you know, a lot higher than the shooters are. You you see everything before we see. Yep, I especially noticed that daytime shooting. Yes, as well. Yes. Give me a little bit daytime. of platform, some good polarized mm-hmm. glasses. I'm spotting fish five ten yards. Before you guys right, do. Right, You know? I know years ago when we used to go down to Kentucky Lake and film grassies during the daytime, Tim was always up on the filming platform, and, you know, he's spotting them. Calling the shots up way, there. Oh, there's, there's two of them way over there. Sure. There's two of them underneath that shrub over there. You know, he's seeing them way before I can even, you know, think about seeing mm-hmm. fish. Yep. So that's that's pretty cool aspect. The the cameraman is always telling us pretty much, oh, there's some over here. And you even sit on the way home that night that there was fish... That on, swam by us yes, a couple kids that we on, never even saw. On either side, and then the fans going, and if you had the fans right. going hard, I'd I'd be up there. Oh, my, Matt, Caleb, <laughs> fish over here. I didn't, there's, there's a couple clips in there of me, and I'm just, I'm like, oh. And there's a fish just swimming right by the boat, just taking its leisure time, perfectly in focus, right in frame, and then there's Matt and Caleb on the deck. <laughs> I wonder how many times that really happens in the course of a night if you don't have somebody paying attention. Oh, right, right, I know. If Yeah, yeah you guys would have never known about those fish. No. You know, if I wasn't no. up there with the, you know, bird's eye view. Right. So. so. No, the reason I was, I'm partial because I spent four and a half hours today in, out in the shop building bows. Oh, really? What yeah. kind of bows were you building? Hooligans. Hooligan oh. kits. Yeah. They are flying out the door. Flying out the door. People mm. are really liking them. And from, from what I've used and seen of them, I love them. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> that can be our product highlight for this Yeah, episode. we can do product highlight on, uh, on Hooligan shirts. Sure. sure. I was out there busier than heck, four and a half hours building them, building yep. kits. Yeah. Send them out. So, so from one night we go from taking our time to filming the fish to just a really slow paced kind of mm-hmm. bow fishing trip. Yep. The following that same weekend, I got I was out in the woods looking for sheds. Yep. And um, my buddy John Hebel from John's Custom Boats called me up and says, "Hey, we're going out fishing tonight. You want to come along?" I says, "Ah, I says, let me call you back in twenty minutes. I'm out in the woods." Sure. Well, it didn't take me long to call him back. I said, yep, I'll be yep. your house. You know? <laughs> yep. so, so I went out shooting with John and his buddy Josh Knutson in his airboat. Mm-hmm. Um, and you want to talk about a difference from how we do it when we're filming? No, oh, I bet. To like that night where mm-hmm. it's fill fill the boat. Yep. Fill the boat. Yep. Shoot um, a fish, get it in, get it off, get another. <laughs> it, it was it's really cool because in the airboat, it, you know, we were able to drive on top of the ice and get into spots oh, where other cool. boats couldn't get to and mm-hmm. stuff. And man, uh, we've I don't know how many barrels we filled up. I think we shot over two hundred fish oh on uh, two hundred commons that night. And uh, but it's just such a different. You know, you can go from one extreme to the next extreme where yep. you're just it's gung ho. It's fill the boat. You know, it's numbers time. Right. Let's get them. You mm-hmm. know. So it was it was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun that night with John and Josh, and. Um, I don't get on airboats very often, so you know it's really cool. It's a to, neat experience. It is. It's it's a little. We were we were really pinballing it because, like I said, the waters are so low, and we were out in the main channel area, so there's a really strong current sure. out there, and um, so we were pinballing off of stumps and stuff, and you you kind of had a you know watch oh, yourself. You're, sure. you're kind of pinballing. You're hitting one, and then the back end is spinning this way. You hit another one. And stuff. Oh, but, wow. Huh. So, yeah. So there's, But it was funny because we were heading down there at dusk. It was getting dark by the time we got down to the area where the carp were at. And it looked like a tournament. I remember you saying that. The it next... was crazy. There was a light there, light there, light there. Lights, 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 lights. It's like, my goodness, there's, mm-hmm. a, there's a tournament. And that always happens this time of year in that certain body of water. You know, the carp just really move in there. And they're they're slow, lethargic, easy to shoot. Slow, yeah. And what it does is it's the Wisconsin River that's opening up, you know, the ice, the currents and stuff. Like I said, they're draining it, so there's a lot of current. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't take long for stuff to open up down right. there when that starts happening. Right. But yeah, we had a good time shooting all those fish, um, shooting them from his airboat, and then being able to get to new spots. Um, we chased a couple of buffs around, but. It's so fun, and the power that those things have is just incredible. I oh, just yeah. really, really enjoy going out and shooting fish in those every once in a while. And just that, I, I, I'm i not a number shooter. I, I'm a more, you know, 
big I like fish. to chase a big fish. Yep. Um, so it, it's fun to go into those nights sometime where it's just different. Gung-ho, yeah, you know, different. Go different. at it, you know. Mm-hmm. So I really, I like that. That's a lot sure. of fun. Yeah. We had a good time. Yeah, it looked mm-hmm. like it. I remember seeing a picture. Someone pulls out Facebook. I was like, "Oh my gosh, yeah, that yeah. is a lot of fish." Was, and you said you were you were shooting some good sized fish too. Yeah, we shot and, some good fish. I, we never. It, and and it's you so did. Funny. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny because when we go out, you know, we shoot a big fish. We're we're weighing it. We're taking a picture. We're holding it up. We're here. We're just, you know, you shoot a twenty seven pound comma, You just whoosh, throw it in the barrel yep. and get back on deck and yeah. shoot the next. Yep. Nine pounder, or shoot the next two pound drum. Sure, you know you're shooting everything. Yep. So it's 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 a lot of fun. And there was a lot of drum around. <laughs> Those goofy drum, they're they're so funny to shoot this time of year because as soon as you stick them with an arrow, they like just they just like freeze. Yep. They don't flinch. They don't wiggle. They don't twitch. They don't oh, nothing. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You notice it in that video yep. from when we were down there yep. earlier this year. We were shooting those drum, and they don't move a muscle. It's like they were. It's like you shot them, and they're already dead. Yeah. <laughs> They don't yeah. move it. They're weird. They kind of, oh, they got me. Yeah. I'm just going to come done. in. Yep. I'm done. Yep. I'm done. Get me in the barrel, boys. <laughs> I'm I'm go, for a, go for a bull, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, oh, one thing that I want to talk about, um, a couple weeks ago on our podcast, we were also talking about what to do with, what we do with our fish here mm-hmm. in Wisconsin. Somebody asked us, you know. Yep. Um, I've got a local farmer. So before I went out there this year, I stopped in, you know, just to make sure that it was okay again, that we could, you know, get rid of our fish and their, and they could use them for fertilizer. So sure. I stopped in there and asked him, he's like, absolutely. And he says, just bring me a 30 pack of beer. That is a very good deal right I there. I said, heck yeah, man. Yep. So what's your flavor? Bush light, Miller light, Bud light. Mm-hmm. And um, so, you know, I know we talked about it a couple weeks ago, but that's, you know, if they let you... Get rid of your fish and certain, and, and their farmers let you use their pits for removing of your fish and getting rid of them. Offer them something, mm-hmm. you know. Offer for them sure. something. Offer them help during the season. Offer them a thirty pack of beer. Offer them some venison, you know, mm-hmm. some sausage Ooh, or some something. Some venison, that oh, yeah, that'd be a good one right there. <laughs> yeah. Would you ever get rid of your venison? No. No. <laughs> no. Nope. That's all you eat is venison. Yeah, it is. Venison jerky, it's venison like, sausage, venison kibasa, venison you can, this, venison that. You can that. have it in so many ways, and then <laughs> I'm getting into making it, making jerky and stuff, and it's just, it's, uh, you know, I just feel a little bit better, a little bit more uh, spunky when I eat some venison. That's yeah. always a good thing to... You found some nice sheds already this year, too, haven't you? Yeah, we found a couple. Cool. A couple. Maybe one or two of a three-year-old, but nothing, nothing too crazy. Awesome. I found a six-point shed that might square about... 30 inches? Uh, like a half of a six? <laughs> One side. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, that's sure, all I've found sure. so far. Yeah. How's your uh, March Madness pool coming along? Oh. Maybe some of you guys who are listening have talked to Wendy before. <laughs> I yeah. just want you guys to know she wiped the slate clean. Yeah. It was between me and her. I had Duke. She had Michigan State. And yeah, Michigan State won. She wins. Everyone else is toast. She 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 won already. And she we're, did. We're, we're final four. We got final four in championship game yet, but right. everyone else is done for. Everyone else picked Duke and Zaga, or Kentucky. I picked and, North Carolina. Oh yeah, and UNC and all yeah. those teams are out. Yeah, I had North Carolina and Duke in the championship. Yeah, with North Carolina winning. Yep. I'm done. Yep. When we can just give the give the money right to her already. Mm-hmm. Our Badgers didn't do too well this no. year. No. My goodness. I felt gracious. bad, but I picked them to lose first round against Mary. Or no, Oregon. And Oregon, I also picked yeah. Marquette to lose to Murray State. Jeez. Yeah, that was Jeez. that's too bad. But you know, we are now in the month of April. Mm-hmm. Things are really going to start heating up, big time. Oh yeah. Um. We got our buff spawn coming up. We've got you know our, our common spawn coming up. Um, I think that's going to be really cool if we can do our podcast when we're filming, and people are going to see the the buffs. You know when we're out shooting buffs and stuff like that. It's going to be really cool. So I'm looking really looking forward to you know the, the month of April is really where where I really get this weekend. 60 degrees, I think. 60 and sunny this weekend, I think, yeah, is what I it's called. Yeah, I be gone for. this weekend. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's going to that's gonna be tough. Wow. Yeah. yeah. But, no, that, the month of April, man, I really get jacked up. That's when bow fishing, to me, really turns into high gear, mm-hmm. um, especially when you get to the middle of April and the... And stuff starts really swinging. Stuff starts really the, the fish are really moving. Stuff starts opening up more. You can go a lot more places. And um, I, 
April is a month for me, especially the end of April. Sure. That's when things really start heating up, and, and you can go out and shoot some huge fish, some some pre-spawn fish. Shoot you know, a lot of fish, too. Shoot a lot of fish. Shoot, shoot a lot of fish and shoot some big fish all mm-hmm. in the same, you know, yeah. area. Yep, yep. So, so if you're just getting into bow fishing, you need to get out there this time of the month, first of may yeah that's when things really start heating up yeah get out there and you don't need nothing fancy you can just go out there in a canoe in any, any little dinky john boat getting them back bays and they're going to be fish back in there you could even walk on shore if you wanted absolutely. to absolutely i know absolutely. people that have been doing that and they shot some good fish yep. already this yep. year mm-hmm mm-hmm that was pretty cool oh getting back to that night when i was out with john and josh yeah we busted through the ice we drove on top of the ice and we got to some pockets where there was no other boats couldn't get in there and we were shooting fish and we saw a light along the shoreline so as we we're going down there it was a bull fisherman mm-hmm. um and you you couldn't get into that spot with a boat but you, there was a parking lot there so sure. he was just kind of waiting in the water and stuff like that so we cruised over by him and we Told him to jump in, and that's awesome. He jumped in, and we cruised around with him in there a little bit. He shot a couple of fish, and he was all jacked up with that. He said he's never been in an airboat before, and stuff like that. So, so if you ever see somebody, you know, from the bank shooting, you know, offer him a chance to go out in the mm-hmm. boat. He was like, you I know, bet you he was tickled pink when he was offered. happy. He was happy. It was only on there for you know 10, 15 minutes, sir. Sure. But when he jumped off, he said. Thank you guys. Yeah, you know, that was that was a lot of fun. I appreciate That's awesome. that. So, That's if you ever cool. see somebody on from the bank shooting, you know, offer them a little little ride in the boat to give them a different perspective of Absolutely. what uh, you know what bow fishing has to offer, as well as you know from the boat. Yeah, and like I said, you don't need nothing fancy. You don't need nothing fancy to go and shoot them fish. Getting back to, we were talking earlier about how low the water was when you put the boat in. Yep. Do you remember putting the boat? Back on the trailer. Oh, that was that was worse. Putting it on was worse than putting it in. It was bad. That yeah. was bad. We we tore up a prop pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It got pretty shredded. Yeah. Even though I didn't. Gosh. I mean, I know we were kind of hitting rocks and stuff getting up there, but at no point did I think we shredded it as bad as we did. Yeah. We we hit something pretty hard and broke the prop on it trying to load it and even that we couldn't load it because the trailer was so far out of the water we could not get the boat. We couldn't drive it onto the trailer like normal. We had to eventually put the winch on, pull it up as tight as we could. There's right. probably a good foot and a half, two feet from the bunk to the yeah. front of the boat. Yeah. Yep. And we had to pull that up the ramp. Yep. And the winch was making some questionable noises. <laughs> was she creaking a little bit? She was. <laughs> and then once we got it up there, you and Caleb were in the back and you, you rocked. We rocked the back as, of the boat. As I and there was a point I was sitting up there winding in that winch. And there was a point where I was like, okay, my arm is going to fall off. I need to have take a break. But just as I would go to say, hey, guys, take a break, you guys would give it we, another we push. And pushing. you guys were giving her back there. <laughs> so I just, oh, my, that next day at work, my arm, oh, my gosh, I was so sore. But we got it up there. It worked doing that. It did. It worked. And plus, you know, I I think we ended up the night with 55 fish. And that's that taking our time. I mean, almost every fish we shoot, turning around, talking to the camera, taking pictures. You know, I, so. I even jumped off the boat and yeah. went, made a little snowman on the ice and ran around on the snow yeah. on the ice, I if, guess. If there was anyone up in those houses off in the distance, <laughs> they were probably thinking, what is that weirdo doing <laughs> out there running around making snow angels? What a goon. Yeah. yeah. That was a fun night. That really was. It it's kind of cool. You don't ever, you know, we get busy here this time yeah, of year. Yeah. Sometimes we don't have time to go out. It's cool to right. get out there when it's not June or July or even May. Right. When, you know, mm-hmm. there is snow everywhere and ice in most spots. It's just a cool little perspective to see. It was, it was a lot of cool. Day. And like I said, you can be all been watching this now on our YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a cool, that. Keep forgetting it's cool night and it's, it's, it's a cool atmosphere and setting. Yeah. With the ice that you're driving along and you can get out and actually step on the ice, like I said. And, and, um, so I hope you, you enjoyed that little bit of it. Um, I think we'll get into our little product highlight. I think this is going to be the Hooligan Bowl. Absolutely. Uh, from AMS Bowl Fishing. It's our new bowl for 2019. And uh, one of the cool specs on the Hooligan Bowl is the wrap cam, rapid adjust post. Yep. And there is a 40 pound post that your string goes to, or a 50 pound post. So. What that allows, or what that means to the shooter is, 
at 40 pound draw weight, you can have your max efficiency because your limb bolts aren't loosened up, right. your limb pockets aren't opened up, your string isn't stretched as much. Um, so it's a really cool little option that you've got max efficiency at a 40 pound draw weight right. versus if you just had like a 50 pound bow and now you want to crank it down so you put your your limb wrench in there and you tr- you crank it backwards mm-hmm. and you get it on the 40 pound draw weight. Yeah, some of you can see some of your limb bolts sticking out a little right. bit and yep. you lose your, a little bit of efficiency. Are, mm-hmm. It works. It can get the job done absolutely. No problem. Right. But yeah. Yep. This way everything is nice and tight. Yep. 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 Max efficiency. Um, the kit comes with the TNT retriever with 35 yards with 350 pound spectral line. Speedy retrieval right there. Oh yeah. Yeah. That arrow comes flying back. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. I know I've had a couple guys who, and I, I think I've mentioned this before, went from a, a Retriever Pro, which is a great, I mean, durable, great oh, reel, yeah. Yeah. to a TNT, and they'll be shooting fish and just kind of old habits take over, and they'll they'll ding their boats with oh, the yeah. arrow because they're not... It comes they're not, back so fast. Right. Yeah. Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. So check out the AMS Hooligan by AMS. It's a... Our new bow, like I said, for this year, and it's a great little bow. It's got a tidal wave rest on there. It comes with the chaos arrow. Very cool well. pattern on it as well. Yeah. Sharp looking bow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very nice. So make sure to check that out. And that's going to wrap it up for episode six. Mm-hmm. Because now I've got to go and edit this. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> yep. And while you're uh, off flying around down south, hopefully I'll be able to shoot some fish. I'll make sure to send you some Send pictures. me some pictures. Yep. Maybe yep. somebody down there will let me jump in a boat one night and oh, take me out and shoot some Okay, fish. this is actually, that's funny you say that, because I guarantee you, you're going to go out down there on, just like on a whim, some stranger's going to ask you to go out in his little 12-foot boat, and you're going to shoot some state record. Ah. You're going to shoot some monster fish. <laughs> it's, I can just, I just know something like that is going to happen. I better go and pack my bow and fly that down with me. Yeah. Just in case yeah. somebody asked me to go along with yep. them down there. <laughs> not, not a bad idea. So make sure uh, you're down there at the Bass Pro U.S. Open Tournament. Best of luck to all the shooters. Absolutely. Be safe. Enjoy the atmosphere. Make sure to stop by and say hello. I'll be in the Bass Pro store at the AMS booth. Pick up some gear and let's talk bow fishing, how things are going. So from all of us in AMS Bow Fishing, we wish you the best of luck. Remember, game low and think big. Thanks for listening, guys.